Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you with us. And uh, we really appreciate you stopping by. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, another edition of That's Railroad, where we bring the railroad to you. <laughs> man, man, we love doing it, too. Okay, today's show. We're going. I'm going to go up here, and we had uh, ultrasonic rail testers come in. And uh, I'm going to show you in today's video uh, one defect that they did find. We'll up, that'll be the second clip in here. And also, I'm going to show you how the ultrasonic rail testers mark the rail. All right? Uh, this one we're going to look at here is um, for TDD. And I'll explain what TDD is in the next video coming out. In the next video coming out, you want to watch that because I'm going to show you in that next video uh, what a ultrasonic rail testing report looks like. And I'll explain some, some of the defects names in that video. So I'll hope you watch that. Okay. We turn around here and uh, while I'm talking, we'll ride a little bit of track. All right. Okay, turn this radio down. Ah, the uh, defect today is an internal defect. You can't see it from the video. It's a, uh, it's called a transverse fissure that's in there. And uh, I will also explain transverse and compound fissures in a completely separate video at some point too, because that's a big topic. And I don't have time to cover that today. But, uh, that is a 30% growth. Now, that rail up there did not break. And uh, you'll see, I'm gonna show you a picture. What you'll see in the video is a little pinhole in the railhead gauge face on that rail. And air is getting in there. But had that rail broken, then uh, you would that would have been black in there. That black is caused by oxidation. Now, what I am going to do, uh, I had a defect in a rail there well over a year ago on curve 44. Um, today's video, we're going to be up at uh, milepost 1.66 on the west side of Bridge 1. But that video, uh, that uh, picture I'm going to show you shows a 30% growth of a transverse fissure. So that picture is. Uh, right here and you can see the black and you can almost see the rings in it okay so uh now i'm going to show you another picture um of a defect that the ultrasonic testers did not find, but I found it with my tamper. Also, the picture I just showed you, I broke it with my tamper. But I'm gonna show you another picture right here of a starting defect. They didn't find, the tamper found it, and you'll see the little hole there where the air is getting back into the inside of the rail. today's show and we'll get uh, up here and get out on our track and this, this video has been uh, has been made in the several different time frames so we got a little snow this morning this is january the uh, 9th here typical southwestern pennsylvania morning in january <laughs> all right we'll be right back Okay, I want you to see that my inspection mirror here. We had a ultrasonic rail tester in here there Friday. And uh, I'll show you that. It's called a transverse defect. I'm 
Okay. See if we can't get a little closer here on this uh, and show you that here what they found. I don't know if the light's going to be real good on this or not. This rail's got to get replaced. We had one, I wanted to show you too, this is how they mark them. Put their uh, ribbon out. And the yellow marks right here is where the transverse defect is in here. It's a 30% growth in, in inside the rail in, right in here. So, and we got another one up here. Right there. See that. This is a bad stick of rail. And uh, ASAP, we got to get this fixed. It's in a 30%. And there's uh, two of them. Okay. And that's the mile post, 1.66. And the testing date, that was on Friday. They found a, a vertical split head in another rail down by mile post four. Yes, uh, they were here Friday. I wasn't with them. It's a company called Ultra Tracks. They were from Canada. And uh, I wasn't actually, I actually took a day off Friday. I didn't know they were coming or I would have worked. But anyway, uh, Saturday, yesterday, we uh, did change that rail down there at mile post four. And I was gonna show you that, but uh, we had to get a, my high rail truck is uh, currently in the shop. So I have no hydraulics, so Frontier did get, send us a grapple truck out here. And uh, we re got the rail, but it didn't have any hydraulics. So all the spikes on that rail down here, we had to pull by hand and drive them back in by hand. <laughs> Had three of us, and we did pretty good. 48, 48 minutes to replace that section of rail. It was in tangent track. Everything went really well. All right, what we did not do is put the anchors on. That's a project for this week sometime. All right, but this, uh, this rail is definitely getting replaced next. Okay, we'll talk to you a little bit more here about the uh, transverse defects in uh, just a minute. Well, all right, here we are next day after we put these, uh, we put two rails in here actually yesterday. And then we put a third rail in up at the, uh, on the other side of the loadout. Uh, this always the best practice uh, is run a train, get, get your replacement made, run a train over it, come up and check it uh unable to do that yesterday because it was at the, the 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 first train that they ran over it was near the end of my shift so and it was after dark uh, getting close to dark so uh this is the uh they've run uh, three trains over this first thing uh, here sunday morning and I'll come up here and check it out you know we had a uh this is an old rail we put new rail in and we got to grind the I ground this down so that uh, the heads matched up pretty good, and they did. All righty. This is where we had the uh, two uh, TDDs at right here. And uh, this section piece of rail up here <coughs> did not have any uh, Sperry defects, but it the the head right here on this rail was really really battered and this was dipped down too also from that batter so we just went ahead while we're here and changed both of these rails so what we'll do with this other rail that's uh laying down here on its side uh is use that crop that end off where that end was battered and use the rest of that for a plug at whatever point in the future so there you have it <laughs> Pretty good job. A lot of handwork. 
my big high rail truck is still in the shop. So, what a hand spike and what a... Okay, so we find a defect. And uh, there's a lot of different de defects, but the one we found um, was a transverse fissure. So we look in here in our track safety standards and the Code of Federal Regulations, and we find out what they say about this. Okay, so we'll go over here and we'll find our transverse fissure right here. All right, so this is what it says about it. Percent of railhead. I'm trying hard to get this focused. Cross-sectioned area weakened by defect. Okay, now it says less than 70%. So we had a 30% growth. All right. So we're less than 70%. Now you go over here and this is the code we look at, code B. So let's go see what B means. Also, you see the Code of Federal Regulations has various defects that they cover and uh, different remedial actions for each of the defects. And I'm not going to go through all this on this video. So let's go over here and see what uh, B says. Okay. Well, let me back up here uh, and read this. If defective rail is not replaced, take the remedial action prescribed in notes. Okay. Well, now we did change that rail, but until the time of the rail change out, this is what's got to happen. Limit the operating speed over the defective rail. All right. To um, the operating speed cannot be. I'm trying to read this and focus on my phone at the same time, so I apologize for that. The operating speed cannot be over 30 miles an hour. All right or the maximum allowable speed for the class of track concerned, whichever is lower. We have 25 mile uh, an hour track. So, um, you know, we uh, didn't have a problem with running trains at 25 mile an hour according to the Code of Federal Regulations until we could get the, train, the rail replaced. All right. Um, because of the two... Uh, defects that were in so close proximity, um, we did not put a joint bar on it. Um, had there only been one defect there, then we probably would have put a joint bar on it. But uh, because of the two in close proximity, we didn't. So we ran our train there at 25 mile an hour over that rail for uh, about five or six days before we got the rail replaced. Okay, I want to show you something else I got here. Hold on. All right. Now, this is a very special book. It was given to me by my good friend, Steve McCarthy. And, you know, Steve was on our show giving track inspection reports there. Um, got vi several videos on that. Steve's got a really cool YouTube channel over at Stormy Sky Rail Productions. There's a link in this video's description for you to go to watch uh, his channel. It's a, it's a really cool channel. Got a lot of trains on it. Anyway, you know, Steve was a track inspector and section foreman for Canadian Pacific. And this is the Canadian Pacific Railroad Bible. And it's got all kind of cool stuff in it. But I wanted to show you what Canadian Pacific says about this. All right. The uh, transverse or de defect or detailed fracture TDD. Okay. That would be a medium growth, a TDD at 21 to 40 percent. Their protection code is at 3 or 17. So let's go see what 3 and 17, what the Canadian Pacific would do in this particular instance. All right. Let me find it and I'll be right back. Okay. Canadian Pacific says assign a qualified track supervisor to visually inspect. Uh, we did that. That would be me. And restrict the operation of trains to not more than 10 mile an hour. All right. Defective rails must be replaced as soon as possible. 
So that's one thing that we did deviate between what Canadian Pacific would have done and uh, ours. We did were within Code of Federal Regulation specs on the mile per hour over there. All right. So let's go over here and see what 17 says. Uh, apply joint bars and restrict operation of trains to not more than 30 mile an hour or maximum allowable speed under the class of track. So why we did not put the joint bars on. And again, I knew at that time when I found it that it was going to be uh, four or five days before we could get that rail replaced. So anyway, that's uh, for each individual a defect that we would find. This is how we would approach um, going about finding out the remedial action that we should take. All right. This is a really cool book. I love this book. I am so, so thankful to get this book. <laughs> okay. Very good. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed today's show. And uh, again, make sure you uh, stay tuned for and uh, check out the next uh, next week's uh, video. All right. Have a really good day. And again, happy rails to you until we meet again, my friend.